Shut up and sit down. Uh, have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. I sure do appreciate it, as always. Okay, remember Brian O'Brien tonight on Master Chef on Fox. Starting the day. We got on the radio. Radio interview first, then breakfast. Gonna be a good day. So I've been doing these radio interviews every Wednesday and Thursday over the phone, but I'm gonna go in today because I get to meet Dave himself. Dave Tappen, uh, good good guy. I've built kind of a little relationship with him uh, via phone calls and phone interviews that we've been doing. Guy loves food. I love talking about food. So uh, it's a friendship made in culinary heaven, if you will. 8:45. We are back with Redding's Brian O'Brien tonight, competing again and doing uh, quite well on Master Chef on Fox. I imagine with those team challenges too, there's a lot of different egos you got to massage. Absolutely. I mean, I was the biggest ego of them all, pretty much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the personalities you got to juggle different personalities. That's one thing that I, I really try to do as team captain. You know, I have a master's degree in human behavior, so I had a little bit of an advantage, kind of reading people and putting them putting certain people where they belonged. And, uh, you know, last episode was a team challenge. They didn't talk about how, you know, the winning results were. Yes, my team won. They didn't talk about that, my team won handedly. Like, I uh, I think we got 70% of the votes. Hey, guys. Good morning. Hey, this is, uh, <coughs> this is Ryan. Hi, Brian. Brian, how are you? I'm well. Oh, this is going to be week five. 297 here. Billy Patrick Show. Good morning, 814. Just having uh, some fun this morning. Patrick, to introduce our <laughs> very, very special guest. We got a lot of foodies in this building and uh, people who tuned in to Master Chef and Brian O'Brien. What is that your real name, first of all? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it is my real name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to Patrick, give something because I do not like Patrick meatloaf. Patrick, oh, man. Meatloaf. He won't do it. Well, <laughs> you have, you've never had the fourth generation Brian O'Brien <laughs> meatloaf. Happy day, guys. Hey, too. Breakfast time. I'm gonna go with the smaller portion number five. Right. We're gonna go over easy. Sausage. Let's go sausage. Alice. Let's go hash browns, please. Mm -hmm. Biscuit and gravy. Perfect. Every time. <laughs> At first, I didn't want to hang out with anyone. Like I literally was just like, these are my competitors. I'm, I don't want to associate with them because I want to dominate them. But <clears throat> the more time you spend together. It feels more like an us versus them. We're like a family. Like we have a full on top 20 text messages going at all times. Instagram messages, Facebook messages. So yeah, they're all like family. And so it's hard for me to like talk smack about any of them because I love them all. Been in, in the kitchen several times together so we all kind of knew our strengths and weaknesses. And I was going to say, but you guys are already full. We're so full. We're good. And I got a picture of the two, man. Did you? Yeah. We can do another. We can do another. <laughs> so I just didn't want to fall behind because like I've seen on these cooking shows before where if you're, if they have people waiting like any period of time, they're like, okay, you don't get a plate from the red team. Just go to the blue team. And I didn't want that to happen. Um, did we start cooking early? Absolutely, but did we know anybody? No, until he came over, dreamed me about it, and then we slowed it down. Um, I thought we were doing it right, but I mean, again, I've never done it, but any, none of us have ever done anything like that before, so we all thought we were doing it right, and then it turns out we needed to wait. We just wanted to get things done, you know? Right. But, seeing their plates because the, they would start with the blue team and then so their plates are in their hand and we hand them ours so I got to see what their plate looked like and it looked awesome I thought we were gonna get dominated instead of, pep instead of paprika she used cayenne pepper which is like the hottest thing in the world um, as far as dry seasonings go we'll have any makeup on. oh yeah 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 <laughs> there you go let me take her yeah, you gotta do it upward yeah. Yeah. check it out what Let's are you talking about oh Fantastic. 
We are at Whiskey Town. Beautiful lake. It's a visitor center. Whiskey Town Lake right here. So growing up, we used to come out to the lake all the time. I mean, it's always 100 degrees in Redding, and so there's either go on the Sacramento River, go to Shasta Lake, or come to Whiskey Town Lake. And we'd come to Whiskey Town more often than not because rope swings, cliff jumping. I mean, it's beautiful. And it's just a way to cool off. Whiskey Town. You get what? This is a little cliff jump area. Woohoo! Love it. Water perfect. All right, let's do it. So it's lunchtime. A couple viewing parties ago, the manager of Best Little Sandwich Shop uh, came to my viewing party and pitched me the idea of creating a signature sandwich. So I'm like, that's totally cool, I'm totally into it. So I, I looked at their menu, saw what they had, what they didn't have, and I came up with a signature sandwich. So that's what I'm gonna go get. Uh, the one that I came up with is it's a BLTA, which is, you know, bacon, lettuce, tomato with avocado, and then I add tuna salad to that. They already had a tuna salad, they already had a BLTA on the menu. I just kind of molded the two together and made the number 69 and a half. Brian O'Brien. That's what I'm gonna go eat. It's gonna be delicious. It's keeping up the fans, you know. Alright, we got the 69 and a half, the Brian O'Brien. Let's tear into this bad boy. <laughs> For bacon, lettuce, tomato, avocado with a little tuna salad and a pickle. Funny, uh, we went in, we ordered three Brian O'Brien sandwiches, because obviously that's what I'm gonna eat. I designed it, it was delicious. And then two people after I was there come in and order the Brian O'Brien. One guy even was like, oh yeah, I heard about it on the radio. I'm gonna go back, get a little rest before viewing party tonight. It's gonna be a, quite the shindig. Next day, just took a nap, right by the pool. And now it's time to go to the viewing party at Shameless. We got an Uber coming, should be here any minute. This is gonna be a shellfish episode, mystery box number two. Um, those that don't move on are gonna have to learn how to cook Gordon Ramsay's scrambled egg recipe, which is one of his signature dishes. I had a woman from like Nigeria today hit me up on, on Facebook and asked for a, she wanted a cake recipe. It's like one of the only people I didn't respond to, but I could tell she didn't speak English. Most people, I try to I try to engage with most fans, you know. I had a I had a, a Chinese person text message me. I was running through the six with my woes. I was running through the six with my woes. You know how to 
So a lot of people turned up. I'm pretty happy about it. I didn't get eliminated. I wasn't super highlighted or anything. But we had the shellfish. Never worked with any of it. Soft shell crab, I've worked with one time. Shrimp obviously is there. But uh, I, did, I did a soft shell crab inside of a potato soup. Uh, they didn't show it, but I didn't get eliminated. And then the eggs, they didn't talk about it, but Gordon Ramsay called them textbook, so I think I did pretty well there. All right, now, apron off. Party. 